first started reading the Bible, I wanted to share everything that I was learning with those around me. Um, and I used to be excited to talk about Jesus, but every once in a while I would come across a question that I kind of found a little weird. Like um, in high school once, a friend asked me, how do I know that the Bible isn't written by a bunch of hippies from the 60s? Now, uh, the answer seems pretty obvious. At the time we were actually studying the Reformation, which was a long time before the 60s. But uh, I think that the question that he was really asking is, how do I know the collection of books that I have are the Word of God? And is there anything about Scripture that suggests it deserves the authority we attribute to it? And this, I think, is a more substantial question. And so in what follows, I'm going to try to give you five quick responses, five pieces of evidence that suggest that the Bible is what we say it is, the Word of God. So let's start with the first piece. First, the Bible is uniquely consistent and unified. It consists of 66 books from 40 different authors of different socioeconomic groups, professions, age groups, languages, and it spans over several centuries in several different nations. Yet a unified story is found in this collection of books. Such a feat of unity would not likely happen in a single congregation a day, let alone multiple congregations and across multiple generations. Second is the historicity of the Bible. The Bible makes real claims about real people using real dates and real locations, most of which have been confirmed via archaeology and extra biblical sources. For example, in citing 32 countries, 54 cities, 9 islands, and numerous officials and political leaders, Luke never made a mistake. Such a painstaking accuracy may not provide the validity of all scripture, but it does preserve the possibility. For it is easier to give credence to an individual regarding their testimony when he or she proves reliable regarding verifiable content. Third, the Bible is uniquely honest. Consider David's confessions in the Psalms, or Peter's denial of Jesus when Jesus was in his most vulnerable hours, or even Moses losing his temper and striking the rock and then not being able to enter the promised land. Consider the immaturity of the apostles and even consider the fact that Jesus, the one whom we call Messiah and God, not knowing the time of his second coming. It's difficult to imagine that someone would have made these stories up if they were trying to advance the agenda of the church. Fourth, the Bible is full of fulfilled prophecies. There are more than 2,000 prophecies in scripture, most of which have already been fulfilled. Jesus alone fulfilled over 16 very specific prophecies that were written no later than 400 years before him, many of which could not have been humanly manufactured. It would kind of be like me trying to predict the birthplace, the circumstances surrounding a birth, and the life work of a person that was going to be born in 2417. And finally, the Bible possesses an unprecedented power to transform the lives of its recipients. Since its conception, the Bible has radically altered the lives of people from different time periods, ethnicities, socioeconomic backgrounds, and worldviews. So let's recap. You have unity, historicity, honesty, prophecy, and transformative power. Taken separately, none of these provide a definitive defense for Scripture being the authoritative Word of God. But taken together, they make a pretty compelling case. Now, I've only been able to briefly introduce these pieces of evidence. If you want more information on these, I encourage you to do some exploring yourself. And at the end of this video, there will be a few book recommendations to help you get started. Happy reading.